and welcome to Adobe Live. Woohoo, we're here. Happy, uh, what is this day? Oh gosh, June 28th. Yay. We are here to uh, have some character design, like work, <laughs> Kali, I know how to talk. So, hey, we're here for character design with Sam Peterson, the one, the only. Uh, today, we're going to have an emphasis on lighting. Super excited for that. And if you didn't catch it, we just saw Kathleen Martin doing the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Those are playing all week at 9 a.m. Pacific, so don't mess up, miss out on the new set of challenges. Uh, it's so good to see you all in the chat. We have so many friends already. We've got Mercurial Forte. We've got Sean Cassell. We've got my friend Oboyatoy who is Anthony, my best friend. And also Cody Bear is modding today. Hi, Cody, how are you doing? Are you surviving the heat in Portland? I know you are. <laughs> uh, Sam Peterson, even saying hello in the chat himself. Hello, Sam, a uh, regular to be hands. <laughs> oh, hey, everybody. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Uh, just a reminder for everybody watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching there. But also we are going to be reading the chat on Behance. So if you wanna be part of the conversation, just hop over to behance.net slash live. Uh, so Sam, hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. I'm, I'm thankful that it's not getting that hot here yet because I, I don't like the heat. Yes. Okay. Good to know. Uh, do you have any AC? Are you okay? <laughs> we don't actually. Um, we're pretty close to the coast though. So if you like open all the windows, there's usually a nice kind of cross breeze. But when Fantastic. times get desperate, I use a, we have a portable AC that we bust out in like the hottest weeks. Definitely. That's the way to do it. <laughs> I was looking for portable AC and could find none. <laughs> they all sold oh, out man. so fast. If uh, you guys don't know, uh, well, I'm in the Pacific Northwest and it is being hit with a incredible heat wave. Shout out to anybody else in the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. right now. Um, and also shout out in the chat where you're from. We always love seeing uh, we have a global audience and where everybody's coming from. Uh, and just to uh, get to know you a little bit, Sam, if people don't know you yet, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. Um, so some of you may know me from around Behance and that kind of thing, but uh, I am Sam Peterson. I do a lot of concept art and fantasy illustration. You can find me everywhere online in Sam Peterson art, but I primarily do like characters and creatures and fantasy and that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And we've got your uh, Instagram up right now. So yeah, that's Sam Peterson art. Everybody follow mm -hmm. Sam because this amazing artwork just it needs all the likes. Give it, give it, give it. Share, share, yeah. share. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I figured I'd share a little bit of what I've been doing lately with you guys if you haven't seen my work. Um, I actually had this big gap in Instagram for like five months or something. And now I'm just posting every day. So starting with this dragon picture here, I've been posting each day for for a few weeks now. So if you want to kind of catch up with all my current stuff, this is what I've been doing. Um, I've been trying to refine my process a bit, starting with this uh, this orc guy here and just get a little bit faster, get a little bit more efficient, kind of really nail down my process. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can see a lot of like quick characters. And this is actually the one I posted this morning, this little elf fella. So if you guys want to keep up with this and see more, you can check it out all on my Instagram. That's the place I'm most active right now, I still need to update some of my gallery sites. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to check that out, you can kind of give Instagram that a look where there. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that elf is brand new because I was looking at your page earlier and <laughs> it's just like, I haven't seen him yet. That's so cool. Yeah, he was a fun one. I was actually pretty happy with how that one turned out and kind of like how easily it came. So make some love progress. That happens. Oof. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and we're going to be working in Photoshop today, right? Yep, we're going to be doing Photoshop, and um, I'll kind of give you guys a preview uh, if now's a good time to see what the process I'm going to be using. Absolutely. So these, these are some of the characters I've done recently. You'll find them on the Instagram. But basically, uh, the process I've kind of uh, dialed in is working in lines first. Then I do flat colors, so I kind of get base flat colors like that. Um, and then this is the stage that we're going to be talking about a lot, which is this lighting stage. And then once I do the lighting, I do a block in and then finish the painting. So with that elf we just talked about, these Ooh, are the yeah. lines. This was actually in pencil. I don't usually work in pencil, but I felt like sketching in my sketchbook. Traditional? What? Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. And then, uh, uh, and you scanned the, it in? Uh, I actually just took a picture and then tried to edit the best I could. I'm too lazy to scan. <laughs> Whichever way you get it into your computer, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it worked. Um, then these are the flat colors, and this is kind of that lighting layer right there. Block in, nice. finish. Yeah. Um, and then 
here's an example of kind of what I've been doing with the lighting. I'll take a sketch and I'll block in different lighting scenarios. I've been trying to be more deliberate about that, actually make a conscious decision like, okay, I need to light it in a specific way that I'm going for from the beginning. Um, because sometimes I'll just start painting and not be thinking about it. So definitely kind of, different kind of fun little lighting scenarios. Well, um, and it shows you how different the lighting can make things feel too. Just seeing those next to each other. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. It really has a really strong impact on mood. And that's something I want to emphasize in my work more. So this was a block in. Um, this is kind of what I'm hoping we'll be getting to today. If, if there's enough time with the line drawing, the colors, and then the lighting block in. So this is before any painting, uh, but you can see you can, you know, get a lot of mood and, and a lot of that information down with just some uh, simple lighting layers. This is before painting. It looks like a full painting. What? <laughs> yeah, I was actually, I was pretty happy with this one because the it's block in looked pretty cool. And I was yeah. like, yeah, it kind of looks cool on its own. Um, but that's what we'll be doing today. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, well, let's jump into it and talk a little bit about, uh, well, I mean, if you guys have any questions about character design, obviously you've seen Sam's work, but if you don't know, Sam also streams here on Behance uh, and streaming is open to everyone. Yay. If anybody wants to stream here, you can feel free. You just go to your little avatar and go click go live. Uh, but Sam, you stream regularly, so you're very mm -hmm. comfortable doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I should be, yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you give Sam a follow on Behance, by the way, then you will be notified every single time he goes live. Uh, so this kind of process is not uh, necessarily like the only place, you know, this isn't the only place you can see this. You can also see it on your page, which is so cool. Yeah, it's like the one social media I'm actually good at keeping up with is <laughs> just streaming because it's like I just have to hit that live button and do the thing I do. <laughs> so I've actually been consistent about streaming for like five years or so. So it's been pretty, uh, pretty good. That is amazing. Congratulations, by the way, five years. Woo. Oh yeah. Like <laughs> I think I really got into it sometime in like 2015 or so. So nice. yeah, it's been, uh, I don't know. It's gone fast, I guess. Here I am now five, like five or six years later. It's addictive, right? Once you start. Yeah. Yeah. Once I mean, pop, especially, don't stop. <laughs> especially if you're like a freelancer and you need, you know, you're, Kind of alone all the time just working putting in all those hours it's nice to have company get input like a lot of people give great suggestions and sometimes pieces change because of that so it's really nice to have that like sense of community absolutely speaking of which cody bear says that rim lighting is chef's kiss so you've oh, got yeah. your first chef's kiss of the stream already <laughs> that's what i was going for mission accomplished Obviously. <laughs> yeah i mean i feel like rim light is almost too easy to rely on and uh I don't know. That's, I guess, <laughs> why I did that exercise. I was like, well, there's room light and that's super fun. And then there's like kind of just regular ambient lighting, but like what others are there? So maybe we'll think of a cool one today. Very cool. Please cool it down. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that is, I think, a common held belief of like, oh, room light's a little bit too easy, but it still works. Are you kidding yeah. me? Like you need something to pop rim light. <laughs> that's how yeah, it goes. And and it's it's kind of like if you look up what is it three point lighting for photography mm -hmm. there's i was kind of actually setting up my files that way i was like all right well we have the key light which is the main light then there's a fill light which is kind of like a bounce light into the shadows to give it a little bit more illumination um and then uh hair light i guess which is essentially the rim light so it's kind of yeah it's a pretty common lighting setup with anything absolutely yeah so I wouldn't shy away from it for any reason, honestly. If it wants to be lit that way, light it. Yeah. But I've, I've found some success actually thinking about like, what lighting should this be? Because that uh, crazy creature I just showed, I was basically trying to combine a, I'll pop it up again. But uh, I was basically trying to combine a Beholder from Dungeons and Dragons yeah. and a Mind Flayer from Dungeons oh. and Dragons. So, the two big bads, great job. Yeah, and they're both very like, <laughs> technically right like the yeah. crazy eyes and then the um, mind flayers have like those face tentacles like davy mm -hmm. jones um but i was like maybe i should put some arms on them too just because why not why not make it weird um, absolutely but they, they live in like what is it called uh the underdark i think is what it's referred to mm -hmm. which is deep deep underground where all these crazy creatures live so i thought like okay we'll have this like kind of red under lighting and then we'll have this uh 
creepy kind of blue rim lighting going on. So I was thinking about the actual environment that they would take place in or, or live in um, for that lighting. So it's been fun to kind of be intentional with that decision sure. early on. That's what um, I was thinking when it's, it's like putting it into the different lightings tells the, not only a mood, but it's almost a little bit of story beat where it's like, this is the environment they're in. If there's some kind of color, they're probably picking it up from what's around them. So mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, and that's um, something you may have all noticed with the all the recent Instagram posts. They're, they all have like a little platform and that's just kind of something I've been having fun with trying to get like a consistent feed going. And it's a really fun way to like imply an environment without drawing a whole background. Just give them For a little- For sure. Like if it's a grassy platform, like, oh, okay, this is someplace where it's sunny, outdoors, grassy. And I do like a simple little gradient color in the background to to emphasize that as well, so. Well, sixth kind of. edition D&D, &D, you know, if they need some new book art, boom. Yeah. In there. You've got the spot it lives just to put in there. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. And also Beholder plus Mind Player. That's a possibility. Something like that could happen. <laughs> I, I definitely, could see that. I, I wanted to actually start drawing more of the like D&D races that I haven't gotten to because there's apparently a ton. I think I just mm -hmm. stick to humans and elves and orcs and stuff a lot, but I'm like, there's a lot of like fun things to draw and then combining different things or putting a twist on them. Absolutely. Know? And tons so, of uh, things to take inspiration from, you know, you could do a kobold yeah. or a kenku and like study the animals they're based on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I think whenever there's a little bit of that element of designing something that doesn't already exist a million times, um, I think that's where I have the most fun. So like combining those two monsters was like, oh, it's a little bit of a twist, but keeps it fresh and interesting. Sammy Fresh. That's what you're here for. <laughs> it's my new <laughs> username. Can you imagine? <laughs> Just rebrand completely. DJ Sammy Fresh. <laughs> what up? We got Club Wade, now Sammy Fresh. Oh, man. <laughs> Club Wade sounds like VIP. Oh, it's a party. <laughs> Make it happen. Uh, by the way, Ferry is asking, uh, how do you learn photo reference for lighting? Um, Photo reference for lighting. Um, I think, I mean, that's just the key is actually when you're doing your own lighting, look up reference and try to inform what you're doing, you know, from reality, from something that actually exists. Because when I was trying to play around with those lighting situations a bit, I was looking at reference. I was like, well... Let's see if I can find like a golden hour, you know, direct light on the face when the sun's setting or or maybe the sun's already kind of set and there's like a little bit of a rim light because they're standing with their back to it. Just different situations. If you find really cool lighting scenarios and pho photographs, save them and, you know, take um for sure. Take like take note of what's so interesting about them and why they look the way they do. That's excellent. Yeah. And I guess uh, another question that I could have for you is like, what's the first thing that you usually look for in lighting reference? Say you have like this beautiful golden hour picture in front of you. Are you looking for color, for value, for any like specific lighting things, like how it hits like the rim light kind of thing? Um, I actually don't look for lighting reference from the get-go as much as I probably should. I'll usually try to sketch out an idea and then once I realize I'm having trouble getting it right or I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to be doing next, I'll look up a reference just to fill in those gaps. So I try <laughs> to get my idea on paper. And then once I realize like, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing on this one part, um, I'll see if I can find a reference. But if I just come across a picture that's super cool, I'll save it. And maybe I'll even do, yeah, a piece from that just because I really want to learn why this picture is so cool. So it, I guess it happens a few different ways. Um, most of the time, I just have an idea in my head, and if I'm lacking, I'll uh, I'll try to look up a reference. But uh, I agree, yeah. It's, it's good to like... save anything anytime it inspires you. For sure, yeah. If you see something that you look at for more than like five seconds, there's probably mm -hmm. something to it. <laughs> yeah, and it's good. Five... Like if you do that often, you'll have a nice little folder built up for later. Absolutely, yeah. The folder is all important <laughs> for those days when you don't feel inspired. So I'm uh, just but, doing a. Oh yeah, sorry. Go on. Oh, I was just gonna say I'm just doing a little warm up sketching at at this moment. This isn't quite uh, what we'll be doing, but I like to do these little figures with just simple 
you know, the old bean shape that you see in animation a lot, but I do a lot of like triangles lately, I guess. You can see in my limbs, like a lot of this stuff is just kind of these triangles. I'm Keeping trying to get the sharp. gesture out. Yeah. <laughs> I just like the idea of like the old bean shape. <laughs> <laughs> you know, old the old bean back. shape. <laughs> My day, that's all we had. <laughs> had to draw beans all day before we were allowed to draw any characters. Exactly. Uh, we have summoned a wild Wade, by the way. That's all oh. I wanted to say. Is Wade has appeared in the chat. <laughs> I thought we only said his name twice, not three times. <laughs> Club Wade, Club Wade, Club <laughs> Wade. Boom, he's here. <laughs> Hey, Wade, how's it going? Also, hello to everyone. I don't think I said to hey, hey to everyone in chat, but thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. Also, Kendall's here, Stony, Fairy. Oh, it's a good crew. So this is me lately. I've been uh, trying to have a, some sort of workout regimen with uh, kettlebells. So Oh, here's nice. Me. Here's yeah. me being uh, horrified that I'm going to drop it. <laughs> the number one rule don't, don't drop don't drop it on yourself <laughs> wait so, says what's up sam <laughs> <laughs> so i think today the goal is like you said we're doing a character with an emphasis on lighting but i think i'm going to do um this kind of idea i've been playing around with lately which is trying to combine fantasy with sci-fi a little bit like take fantasy characters, which I always do, which I love to do, but mm -hmm. put some sort of twist on them. Like maybe in their world, there's some sort of sci-fi elements. I don't know. I'm just going to play around with it. And um, I've done like one or two characters um, that you can find on my Instagram like that. I nice. think maybe just one, but um, I feel like if I do it a lot, I'll find like that sweet spot for like how much fantasy, how much sci-fi. And that's what I want to kind of play with. So we'll start that character now. And I think he's going to have a little robot companion is the Ooh. goal let's see if we have time for that so i actually kind of like this pose but i may um I may change it a little bit i like that pose as well i think it's quite dandy <laughs> dandy is what i'm going for <laughs> <Hit it. laughs> epic fantasy sci-fi <laughs> <Dandy. laughs> i think that's what wizards of the coast typically wants in their prompts right this uh, absolutely it's key this word. Is, uh, this is an elf barbarian who's going into a dandy. <laughs> Love it. I mean, I'm into it. Why aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> dandy, I can do, sir. Have it on your desk. Stoney's saying, I need to do more of the uh, Photoshop challenges. You know, they're great to follow along with. And you can also bring a ton of creativity to them because you've got that like base to go off of and you can also treat these adobe lives as like hey if you want to do some character design along with sam paint along draw along do the thing mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i mean the daily creative challenges and everything are great just because you can you can go pretty wild with them you know mm -hmm. if you want to follow the host exactly or if you just want to take it in a really like creative way or an extreme way you can push it as far as you need to based on your skill level but yeah, I mean, with these especially, you're always welcome to draw along with me. Tag me on social media or something if you post them. Or Absolutely. even on the uh, on the Photoshop Discord, you could put in the Design Other channel. And if you tag me, I'm in there in the Discord. I'd love to see them. Oh, Sam knows all about it because, Sam, you have hosted the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenges, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was oh, my yeah. first time recently. It was a lot of fun. Only heard good things. Woohoo. It's <laughs> good. Absolutely. So if you didn't catch those, they're also replays. So uh, you can always mm -hmm. catch up and do past challenges. It's never too late. Yeah, and then there's the extra two weeks after the initial set where they're uh, replays. So if anyone needs more time, it's a, it's a month long total. Yeah, you got a whole month. Do it. <laughs> no pressure but just if you want to learn more about photoshop or any of our other uh, programs it is invaluable so do you have a, a thought process that you're going through when sketching them a what process a thought process with your body oh yeah yeah <laughs> i mean um I, I basically try to break down each stage into like 
I guess the first stage is gesture, trying to get a good pose, because these are things that you're going to be keeping around for a while. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't like the initial gesture, you're probably not going to like the finished piece. Um, True. So there's, it's kind of all staged out. Like you may, like you saw in the, the processes I was showing where first stage is line drawing. So that's all gesture and design costume and everything. Um, then the second one is color palette and then lighting. So I try to break down each stage so I can just focus on like that one thing. So mm -hmm. this is all gesture um, and pose. And then we're going to do the costume design over this on a new layer where, Ooh, costume. where I, I can be like, okay, I like the pose. I know I want to keep this, but I don't want to mess it up with, uh, you know, the costume design. So I do that on a different layer so I can refer back to this one to make sure, you know, I haven't changed the shapes or anything too much. For sure. And when you speak about gesture, that's like the overall flow going through a character, right? Yeah. And I try to stay zoomed out. Um, I try to do, let me get rid of these guys here. I try to do like big kind of gestural shapes. So if they're hunched over, you know, that line of action, I may really want to emphasize that. Um, and then like their leg, you know, it's these big sweeping lines that really give the character their movement mm -hmm. and determine whether, you know, it's going to have, it's going to feel stiff or it's going to feel really dynamic or anything like that. So gesture okay. drawing is huge. And he's going to have a staff possibly. Um, I think he's going to have a leash for his little companion. <laughs> I think that Keep that robot like... on a leash. <laughs> Your robot's out of control. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking it could be a leash. I do staffs. You know what I realized on my Instagram is I just have some affinity with two-handed weapon things. Like, it's all staffs or giant axes. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll put a leash in this guy's hand. Heck yeah. Switch it up. <laughs> Staff? No, it's a leash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I figured, well, I'm not good at drawing robots, actually. Speaking of Wade being in the chat, he's a uh, he's the robot master. I am I am really in my like little bubble of fantasy, so I'm trying to branch <laughs> out and have fun. So we'll see if we can get a little uh, robot shape down. I'll do something very simple for now. We'll come back to it later. Is this the possibility for collaboration at some point too? Just oh, be like, <gasps> Wade Sam stream. <laughs> you know Love what? That. It's not a bad idea. <laughs> with our powers combined. Seriously, I feel like that could go really, really well. Are you designing robot stuff now? Yeah, um, I'm putting it up here, um, but we'll probably fit a little guy down there, little robot dog or something. Trying to just do like big basic shapes. Um, I know mm -hmm. that's the principle I do when I do character design. Robots kind of confuse me, but it's, it's kind of the same thing, right? Is it like, a big blocky shape or is it like this kind of taller shape here um i think just starting with you know you could do some big round shape and put some legs on it have it be a robot oh gosh, yes it actually looks kind of interesting i it's love like it a, it's like a giant like tick robot or something ew okay now i hate it yeah <laughs> there's a fine line between love and hate yes I, I love the um, big versus small so much. Whenever you have that extreme, it just yeah, it's dandy. <laughs> I I agree. Yeah, I think um, that's that's something I talk about a lot. In design, is the big, medium, small. I think mm -hmm. I think a shape that's like zoom in here. It's like big, medium. You know small shapes here i think this is just more aesthetically pleasing the majority of the time than something that looks like you know yeah like where absolutely. all the shapes are around the same size mm -hmm. agreed <laughs> wade just put three exclamation points in the chat <laughs> <laughs> cody says wade sam stream where they're both drawing that would be so fun yeah, Wade and I have actually, um, we did a test stream together not too long ago, and we are <laughs> planning on doing it more in the future. Annika just put that in the chat. Well, Wade and Sam uh -oh. did a test stream, so maybe <laughs> we need to watch out for more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, we were, 
we were playing around with the idea of doing a sort of like storytelling um, stream where we start out with a character and then build off that story each stream. So it's it's really rough right now, but you know, you very well, if anyone watches either of our streams, you might see that more in the future. That sounds like the best idea I've ever heard. I love it, yeah, it was <laughs> so <pretty> much. Fun. <laughs> It's it's fun to add like a story to the characters you make, you know? Absolutely, yeah. That's the thing that brings it from like design, which is obviously necessary for so many things and really fun. But once you have the story in there, it's like it connects to people's hearts and they feel yeah. it so much more. That's kind of what makes it like worthwhile and interesting. And I think for so long I've um, focused on process and just refining my workflow and all that stuff. And that's fun too, but at a certain point, you're like, well, I actually want to make these characters mean something and have a have a little bit more depth depth to them. So yeah, it's the difference between like seeing Spider Man and being like, that's a cool design, and like knowing Spider Man and being like, oh, Peter Parker yeah. or Miles Morales or whoever is Spider Man this time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I want to get these legs gestured out the same way I do human gesture. I'm trying to just do like stick figures, mm -hmm. essentially little spider legs or something. See spiders ticks, but like they look so cute when you draw them. <laughs> <laughs> well, not cute, but like well-designed, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> not tick like. <laughs> well, I think what is it that makes a tick scary? We, we just won't put that on this guy. Okay. Um, sounds good. Um, cute. I think it's what they do. <laughs> I oh. don't want them sucking blood and giving. Yeah, disease. if this was a parasitic <laughs> robot with like a pointy, you know, needle thing, that would be pretty creepy too. Ooh, ooh, no. Ooh. But he's not. He's he's a good <laughs> robot. I mean, worry. I'm not here to tell you what to design. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I won't allow it, Sam. Yeah, exactly. I say no. Uh, no, you do what you feel is best for sure. I imagine this will be like a little scouting robot, help him along his adventures. Um, as for his his class and everything, like who is he? What is he about? I was thinking he would be some sort of a ranger, you know, like what is a fantasy ranger mixed with a little bit of sci-fi look like? So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll play around with that idea. Love it. So that's I also one. Just love that it's like implied with the leash that this robot might just wander off. <laughs> Come back, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I can't be trusted. Can't have you running off into trouble again. <laughs> I like to think this robot's probably like actually really useful or good at what it does, whatever that might be. But yeah, it just wanders off absentmindedly. Maybe it's like a dog that sees a squirrel, you know, and it can't be trusted. Maybe it's got some weakness like that where it's like, oh gotta go check this out like shiny things it. or something <laughs> yes anything shinier than it is maybe <laughs> Ooh. oh its name is rusty and it's all rusted over oh uh, oh i kind of like that because if this is like a ranger and he spends a lot of time you know outdoors and traveling on foot maybe the robot would look pretty rusty oh, yeah. mm -hmm. a little bit of moss on it or something weather worn Trying to do like a chunkier shape. Chonky. This will be the chonker. <laughs> I love that you're doing uh, multiple iterations of it. I think that's always a really good technique to use for any design. It's like, just don't settle one on one, like keep going. Yeah, and even if it's just like little thumbnails, actually, I think it's best to keep it with little thumbnails. Mm-hmm. Um, because sometimes you'll you'll focus so much on detail right as you start sketching and then you'll realize like this isn't working at all i don't like it but i just was getting into detail way too early mm -hmm. you should be able to see if you like it from these big shapes or not for sure and it takes the pressure off of drawing mm -hmm. where it's like yeah. you don't have to make it every detail it's just the shapes i i found that allowing myself to do like quote unquote bad work and just allowing myself to sketch in a very loose way is very liberating. And I always end up doing like better work, I think. Like the the more I zoom out, the more I keep the big shapes simple and quick um, and try to get those initial ideas out early without worrying about if it's good. Mm -hmm. Like the better the result always is, it seems. 
Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting how that works. Thinking versus drawing. Mm -hmm. And actually all the characters I've been doing on my Instagram lately have kind of been with that intent in mind where I'm just trying to focus on the big picture, the big lighting, the big colors, the big shapes, all this stuff and not worry about details. And actually what I've been kind of doing is trying not to zoom in at all until the end where I just keep the character pretty much at this level of zoom where it's mm -hmm. like the whole canvas is in view. And um, same thing I'm doing with here, like this on my screen, this robot, maybe three or four inches tall. So mm -hmm. it, it helps a lot just to, for me to work in this way as long as I can. For sure. Well, and I've heard that it's uh, it's really hard for people like you who are very amazing at drawing. Like you have the drawing skills, you've got the chops of like making it understood and volumetric and all that stuff uh, to kind of force yourself to zoom out where you're like, I know how to do that, but like I have to stop myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, zooming out has actually been the one tip that I think has helped me the most. Mm -hmm. just because it forces you to focus on all those big shapes and the big ideas. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's kind of, if I ever had like one tip to give myself earlier on, as simple as that is, it's just like time and time again, I'll come back to like, oh yeah, zooming out really helped me with that issue. For sure. So zoom out. <laughs> yeah, I oh, want to yeah. do a, an art challenge where you're not allowed to zoom in past the um, borders of the canvas. I mean, Ooh. mine. mine's kind of weird right here because he's so small. I would blow mm -hmm. him up on the canvas, but where you have to do like the whole painting, you know, from essentially this level of zoom. So even when you're doing the eyes, you know, your brush strokes have to be like that. You just make yeah. your brush smaller. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, I, I should do that on Behance sometime on my own stream. I'll find the time and do a little no zoom in challenge. We need a, a catchy punny name. Oh man, uh, far away. Okay, I'm brainstorming out loud. Uh, <laughs> zoomed out, far away, no glasses, blur your eyes, squint challenge, squint something. Hmm, there's something there. Chat, help me out. <laughs> yeah, if you guys have any good ones, let me know. I'm the worst at coming up with names, so I'll rely oh, no. on all of you to name it for me. That's where the chat is amazing. Okay, there's they're just a brain trust of like word things. Uh, I once upon a time did a a cover for a book that was a bunch of dogs on the stream, and uh, we came up with so many puns of like, or uh, it was alliterations for dogs and having them be somewhat heroic in story. And so I came up as heroic hounds. I can't remember who oh, came yeah. up with that, but I remember seeing that uh, that project. <laughs> I, I yeah. remember there being lots of good names like that too. I there were so many. Oh, it's hard. I can't remember what they were. <laughs> oh, they're already coming in. Oh boy, a toy says Doom Zoom. And that's a little dark. <laughs> doom and Zoom. Doom Zoom. Uh, Fairy says, Far from eye beauty. Ooh, like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but far those, away. Those are like polar opposite names, too. One is so elegant sounding, the other is like Doom. <laughs> Chonky name. Doom Zoom. <laughs> I use Middle Earth name generator for Sam streams. Is that I, a thing? Def I've definitely used name generators before if I don't want to come up with like a fantasy name or something or I need for sure. something quick. I think we'll do chunkier legs on this one to hold up the chunkier body. I like it. Oh my gosh, little chonk legs. They're so cute. Okay, I got to stop saying cute about the robot, but it is. It is. Well, it is pretty. It's, <laughs> let's be honest. It's just, it's pretty cute. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> if that's what you're going for, then yes, it is adorable. <laughs> I don't, don't want to make like a, a bad a robot be all like, oh, it's adorable. But <laughs> it's mean, on a it's leash. His, it's your dog. <laughs> yeah, it's his little buddy. So cute's okay. Yeah. Maybe also, Merc was begging for a cat one, by the way. A cat robot. Oh, cat <laughs> robot, man. What would that look like? Something I'll have to explore. Mm. Does, uh, I guess we can get like a little show of hands. Let me, let me organize this in a better way. But if anyone has a preference between this, these two robots, we'll, we'll A, B them here. Let me get that out of the way. So we're going to choose between these robots. Everybody get your fingers on either A or B. We're going to vote in the chat. I'm voting with you. 
All right, so I think the big one will be B since we did that second. The this smaller is hard. one. Why do you have to make it hard? Smaller one will be A. Whoops. We'll do uh, we'll do A and B. I mean, do these are just any... the general shapes. Oh, okay. Sorry, do you have ahead. any feeling yourself where you're like, eh. That's a good question. I do have a say here. Um, <laughs> I'm the artist. I'll choose. What? Who I, are you? <laughs> I kind of like A. Like, I don't know if the big blocky shapes are doing it for me as much on B. Or, or there's like a small lack of variety. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure what it is. But like even this, I feel like him having an antenna could be kind of cool too. Yeah, ooh, I like the like, long spindlies, but it's, yeah, not crazy integral to the silhouette. So you can still obviously add that beyond this choice. Like, do little wires here, something hanging down. Or there could be like moss hanging from here. Wow, so far it's looking overwhelmingly B. Really? Yeah. How are you all going to do this to me? <laughs> <laughs> I just got attached to A in the past 10 <laughs> seconds. Okay, we can do it. <laughs> you are the artist. You get the final say. If so the there's... people want B, I think we can do B. <laughs> Seen some A's and B's, but perhaps B was a bit more. What do we got? eight b's so far yeah, yeah eight b's like and then one two three four five a's <laughs> five okay we'll go with b we'll play around with the shape a bit more if we need to <laughs> thank um, you chat by the way stony says b all right so i'll put the robots on their own layer <laughs> fairy says i'll choose a if you put a gun on it <laughs> so it has to be a murder bot but this imagine, is the scout bot. Yeah. Imagine it has like this little high-pitched beeping noise that sounds very cute and friendly. And then, it, and then it comes up to someone and just pulls out this little pistol <laughs> out of its body. It's like, is this, Tiny little. is this robot robbing us? I want it to have like laser eyes, kind of like uh, Guardians and Breath of the Wild. I've been playing too much Breath of the Wild. Oh man, it's such a good game. It's so good. We beat that. I don't know how long ago it was. Maybe we finished it like a year ago at this point, but. Oh my gosh. Are you excited it... for two? Yeah, yeah. I just saw the trailer for that and I was like, ooh, that should be pretty cool. <laughs> ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I expect all the fan art. Oh my gosh, right? Yes. I, I need to do that. Actually, I don't know um, if you guys saw it in my Instagram, but I did technically kind of Zelda fan art there. Technically? Tell me more. Um, so that game was, uh, that trailer, I think it was during E3, uh, Elden Ring came out, that trailer, mm -hmm. and everyone was talking about it, and I saw that pot goblin. I don't know if you saw the memes going around about that, but there's this- With arms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was yeah. There's this weird pot goblin, and my brain instantly went to Zelda, so- um, <laughs> The pots are fighting the, back. <laughs> easily the most successful tweet I've had bar none was that was a meme painting of course like a of joke course. meme painting that i did in a i don't know it was like four hours maybe um and it got like i don't know what the biggest you know amount of likes i've gotten on a tweet is maybe like two thousand when i did some streamer card before but it got like thirty four thousand. So whoa it blew up and it was just because it was like the one meme painting i did I love it. Of course, you're like, I am serious artist. And they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know if I said it. I drew Link in there with the pot goblin. And I, I titled it like uh, My How the Tables Have Turned. And it's a little, <laughs> little joke illustration. That is deserving of a retweet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going like, to have oh, to man, check that out. I got to just do meme paintings from now on. Oh, Cody posted the Instagram of it in a chat. Oh, thank you, Cody. Oh, thanks, Cody. Oh my gosh, that's so good, Sam. Oh, I love it. Yeah, if anyone didn't see it, I'll, I'll pop it up for you. So oh my just gosh. Describing it. It's so good. Hey, and it's got the lighting on it, telling the story. Oh. It's like revealing its face. This was around the beginning of me, yeah, really playing around with that technique of like intentional lighting. So it actually worked out really well for this because there was a, a screen cap of this pot goblin from the trailer. 
And I was mm -hmm. actually just using that as a reference. I was kind of copying the lighting and I really wasn't liking it, but I was also just doing a quick meme painting. So I didn't want to spend too long on it. Um, so I scrapped it and I did my own lighting and instantly I was like, oh my God, this looks so much better. Yes, I love it. Isn't that great when that works out? Yeah, yeah, it was a good feeling because I was like, I just want to do this as a joke, post it real quick while the hype is still there and then <laughs> get on with my life. But then I was like getting into it. I was like, oh, this is looking kind of cool. For sure. I feel like uh, I was expecting it to be like some, like a little sketch or something where it's like, here's the idea, done. But it's mm -hmm. like full on, you could see your style almost in that. Like it's a loose painting of yours, but like you can see it's Sam Peterson. Like I, if I saw that, I'd be like, oh yeah, Sam painted that. I, yeah, I have a problem with like control when I get painting, I just keep going. And it's like, most people were doing like little quick, like pen sketches and stuff that was like memes of it and little jokes. But I was like, I gotta do a, I gotta do a full illustration because I Heck have yeah. no chill. <laughs> what else am I doing today? <laughs> Pop Goblin. <laughs> Cancel my appointments. It's Pop Goblin all day. <laughs> all right, there's gotta be a holiday now. You just draw Pop <laughs> Goblins that one day. <laughs> trying to like reclaim the fame I had when I peaked. It's like, maybe if I keep <laughs> doing them, people will keep coming. It's the number one way to not go anywhere. <laughs> Do the same thing again. They'll love it just as much, right? <laughs> Please pay attention to me. Look at my pot goblins. I've drawn 15 of them. I mean, that would be brilliant if you had like a bunch of them where it's like, oh, all the pots. Do you remember, have you ever played Ocarina of Time? Yes, of course there's Classic. a room where you just have to like break all these pots and they're just a bunch and a bunch and a bunch of them and it was, it was just one of those things where I kept coming back and being like oh, the, the pots are back I have to break all of them <laughs> and it took forever but uh yeah it just reminds me of like oh what if they're all pot goblins and they're like little ones this time oh my so gosh it's gonna be next year on the it'd holiday be like, it'd be like the flood in halo it would just be oh so true oh I hate it but I love it. <laughs> uh, so funny. it looks like this guy's getting some brows. Yeah, I, I was thinking, um, sorry, I don't think I mentioned it to everyone. I'm, I'm doing like the whole fantasy sci-fi mashup, but I was thinking what race can I do? I keep doing elves. I keep doing orcs. Um, I was thinking maybe tiefling or something. Ooh. Sometimes they have these weird brow horns. I was just trying out that shape because it looks, looks fun. Definitely. I love it messing with any of the races and uh i i definitely want to see like a collection in your style where it's just like all of it paint all of it Sam. yeah and <laughs> for me i've been doing these paintings where initially it started with me trying to do um a character in a short period of time actually the streams i was doing with wade we were trying to do these storytelling streams and i was trying to do them pretty quickly uh because the streams you know are only going to be an hour or two hours and if we're doing a new part of the story each time i need I need to get something done in that stream. So I was trying to refine my workflow for that purpose. That's how it started. But all the stuff I've been doing um, on Instagram have been not, not an hour, but anywhere from like an hour and a half to four hours, kind of shorter characters. And you know, it's easy to run out of ideas when you're trying to do like one a day. Um, mm -hmm. So I was like, well, I can just do like any D and D race I haven't done yet. So it's just like a bunch of ideas, a um, bunch of, bunch of resources for ideas easily like oh, i haven't done a tiefling yet so let's do that but it's a really cool way to find basically inspiration like hey mm -hmm. there's just a ton of things that i haven't explored yet but are kind of in my wheelhouse so it feels comfy but new yeah yeah exactly and trying to put a little spin on them so i'm thinking ranger um maybe he would have like long hair and what i'd like ranger. to do is i get the <laughs> gesture on one layer and then I, I fade the opacity and then i do uh the like costume on top so in case in case i hate it i'm like ah this isn't working i don't have to ah. erase my initial drawing that is Sorry, a great did, way of working did, yeah did i make you panic there just a little bit you know, the whole thing is garbage ah! why sam why <laughs> It's, um, I saw someone I follow on Instagram recently just painting over one of their paintings and, and it was like stressing people out in the chat. They did like a time lapse of a painting, but they painted over something else. People are like, why are you doing that? 
Just campaign like, over it. it shouldn't work that way <laughs> no i think it gives all digital artists a little stress when you work destructively in any way <laughs> it's like yeah. save everything the possibility Ooh. yeah i make a lot of copies for sure and, and i just like to show off my process too so i save things for sure it'd be really cool to see um have you seen the technique that people use where they like put a mask over uh their final piece and then like it's sketch and then they reveal it by painting in the mask and it's mm. like oh and here's the whole painting Ooh, it's like magic. yeah <laughs> it's probably really confusing to people who maybe don't, don't do digital yeah. art <laughs> they do think there's an art button that you push yeah. and there it is <laughs> oh my gosh is it just reinforcing that that misconception that oh you just probably. press the button right that's what digital <laughs> art is they're ruining it for us oh why all the art directors come in and say it'll take you like two hours right <laughs> i've seen online i saw on tiktok that there's a make art brush don't you lie to me try to charge me yeah. all this money it's all a scam we've just been keeping it so well hidden <laughs> oh cody says i'm a super destructive artist i always erase instead of using masks lol i just make a copy of a layer see there making a copy that's non-destructive right <laughs> yeah i i kind of do the same thing i wouldn't be surprised if that was fairly common among um artists i think like traditional draw drawing and painting um i found that working too non-destructively kind of reinforces this age-old perfectionism that I, mm. I have a tendency towards where i think there's something good about like painting on one layer or if you do some traditional art and you paint in like acrylics or oil or something like that I think it's good to be able to make those decisions and and plan out ahead of time and do all this thought process that comes with only having one layer because I think sometimes in the past I would overthink it and I'd like little changes I'm making I'm so scared like uh, am I gonna mess this up I gotta make a new layer for it and it kind of creates like a um I don't know almost uh a fear to make any real big decisions. So I feel like the tools that digital has given me, sometimes I have to like press back a bit and be like, no, I just got to make this decision, put this shape Absolutely. down. Just like if you're, uh, if you're painting on a canvas, you know, that much freedom is taken away. And I think that, yeah, I totally agree. Digital artists can put themselves in a the corner really easily. If you hold too tightly to the, uh, the feeling that you have to make it this way or that. Yeah, but at the same time, if you really need, if you don't want something to be destroyed, like, I don't want my pose to be, you know, ruined if I have to erase. I already got the pose I like, so I'm going to keep it, so I'll just make a new layer. Or if you have a really cool texture or pattern laid out, you don't want to erase that in case you want to bring it back a bit. So masking is something I would definitely use in that instance, but for sure. I think with digital art, drawing and painting, there's so many decisions you're making every second. So if you try to do everything non-destructively, sometimes it just becomes a bit much. So there's there's a balance I find, I guess, after after a while. For sure. So right now I'm just playing around with big shapes. Um, I thought it'd be cool if I gave them a weapon that seemed not so fantasy, like a little bit more sci-fi. Ooh. Like maybe, so this was the idea I had. I was trying to think, well, what does fantasy with sci-fi mean? Like, what would that mean in a world? And um, I've played around a bit with like world building stuff before. So I guess I'm trying to think about this more when I work, but I was thinking like, what if, you know, guns were a thing in a fantasy world, but not in the way they are here. Maybe it's like a, essentially this giant staff that's shaped, you know, has like a little lever, which is like a trigger. Um, but they can like store up magic, you know, maybe there's, Ooh. maybe it's directly magic or it's some sort of material that has a property like that, but they can like store it up as like charges. And then you press this lever and it basically like charges up and then blasts. So maybe I picture in like a video game, like you pull down the lever, it goes. Nice. So as like, takes like a, you know, like two or three seconds to shoot. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it has like a can cannon into it or something. And then, uh, who knows how many charges it has. So if you're a ranger, you probably have your bow and arrow, your your crossbow or whatever, but maybe you have this this thing that you use in like certain circumstances where it's very powerful, but it only has like six charges to it and then you got to recharge it somewhere. For sure. Um, so it's like kind of sci-fi-esque, but kind of fantasy-esque. 
I love that. Yeah, it's like the sci-fi aesthetics a bit of having like a gun type thing, but then magically charged. Yeah. So cool. And the, the other thing is like, why does a robot exist in this world? It's something I have to ask and I'm not sure yet. Like, right, is, right, this, right. is this alien tech that has been, you know, crash landed or something and they don't know where it is. Did someone actually build this? And it's like a robot that's charged with ma magical means in the same way this is. So if you like charge up something mechanical, you can use it as a power source, but all the mechanics are pretty clockwork and simple. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really sure, but I think the second one might make a little bit more sense. I like that. All of this thought process is really cool because it just, it starts my mind rolling and like, oh, it could be like this. It could be like this, which I think half the battle is asking the right questions. So Sam, you know how to ask the right questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the fun thing with uh, a lot of this, right? Is one question builds kind of a story or it builds mm -hmm. like a part of the world. So if you have this weapon that exists, you have to kind of know what implications that has for the rest of the world. Absolutely. Yeah. How the rest of it could work. And maybe also uh, the different, how what would you call it? Like the levels of finish on things where it's like, okay, maybe a ranger is like, it has more of a makeshift weapon, but it's the same basic logic behind like, I don't know, the the government or whatever, you know, big entity there is, their weapons work similarly, but look a little bit more like streamlined because they're mass manufactured or whatever. Mm, yeah. Just the ideas of that, like, I don't know, rolling into the entire world is just so fun. They probably have like a, a factory of wizards just charging up these <laughs> rifles for them. <laughs> charging up a laser. <laughs> I, I studied for 25 years to become a wizard and now I'm just in this factory charging <laughs> up their rifles. This is ridiculous. Oh, it reminds me of uh, Howl's Moving Castle. Have you seen that? I have. It's been a long time, but I have. The idea of wizards fighting in a war just made me think of that. Mm. It's like, oh man, using your magic users as like fodder for the <laughs> the war effort oh yeah it's crazy but i mean this really this rifle thing really isn't much different than like a wizard spell right it's just like now non-wizards can carry it around in a less convenient way so feel like the implications for the world wouldn't be too dire or too different it's basically just a ranger using a wizard spell absolutely which is super cool. I mean, as a, a D and D person too, like you find magical objects, and you don't necessarily have to be a magic user to use them. Mm -hmm. And maybe the same thing for the robot, if it's like powered by magic in some way. Yeah, and I think that's like the easier solution, right? Because otherwise, there's all these. Okay, well, there's a sentient robot. Now I got to explain that technology to some degree. <laughs> explain it go <laughs> i need to know everything about this robot so, what's his name <laughs> oh that well that's a good question that's uh that's definitely one we should figure out did someone say rusty i think that was one not too bad. <laughs> i like it gotta unlock my layer here so i want to do like a uh, perspective warp i don't actually know if this will work but i feel like the perspective of the robot and the character are slightly different the camera mm. angle So maybe I guess I'm seeing less of the tops. So maybe this would be. Oh, uh, like you're looking up at them a little bit more. Yeah. And just the way I laid it out on the ground, maybe I'll just redraw it a bit. Um, you know, sometimes I like to draw these like perspective squares or something. Mm -hmm. They look like there's slightly on a different platform here. I see, yeah. The grids aren't lining quite the same up, but yeah. that also probably helps with if you're doing the little platform, like you were talking about your previous characters had like kind of a a little bit of the surroundings, but just on a platform at their feet. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of idea would be so much easier to like pop in there if you have a perspective grid already laid out. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I think a lot of it is just like planting the feet. If the feet look planted in a a similar perspective um the thing is the lower you make the camera angle the less of the floor you're gonna see so instead of a floor being like this if you lower the camera angle it might suddenly be more like 
this where mm -hmm. you're ju you're just seeing a more compressed version of it. For so sure. I'm I'm taking that simple idea and I'm like, well, I can see that we're kind of a low camera angle on this guy. Um, so I just need to make the feet a little bit. Like if I took this here and I planted it back here, instantly that kind of shows we're seeing more of the the floor. So I just got to move it down a bit, see if that helps. By the way, it's Mercurial wants the weapon to blast an uncontrollable laughing spell. <laughs> Make oh <it> man, <laughs> that's like a that's like a bard's weapon right there. Yes, oh I love it, Ranger Bard. Oh my gosh, that's like some weird Joker fantasy crossover. Oh my Can gosh, that would be amazing. I love it. I, I wish I based the whole character off this now. <laughs> I mean, you can you can do whatever you want. You're Change the it. <laughs> How irritating would that be? You're just minding your own business and this guy jumps out on the side of the road to rob you and you just start cracking up. <laughs> exactly. And then he's just like, ha ha ha, stealing all your stuff. Bye. <laughs> By the way, Rusty, or Rusty, wow, uh, Wade says uh, the name of the robot could be Rusty as in R-U-S dash capital T, oh as in gosh. like the robot utility scout T-series. Wow, Wade, that is some... Well, he just did it. It's a Rusty. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> R-U-S dash T. See, Wade's got the names. He's got Robotic the... utility scout T-series. Good ideas. We're doing it. Oh boy, a toy says Wade is rusty. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Sorry, I called you rusty, Wade. That was just me getting excited about your comment. It was great. <laughs> the artist formerly known as Wade, now rusty. <laughs> exactly. Change your Behance title, Wade. It's official. Yeah, and then Sam, you were going to change yours to uh, what was it? Fun Sam. Oh, it was something like. Oh, my Sammy DJ Fresh. Name? Yeah, Sammy it was Fresh. Yes, so Sammy Fresh and Rusty, what up? I did this to myself. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so we're going to try to do a fairly loose drawing. You can all see that this um, this line work isn't like super refined. You can see that I'm not even zooming in. I'm trying to just do the whole thing from this level of zoom. For sure. Uh, I find, like I said before, I find the results are actually a bit better because of it, but I also have more fun. I don't know if you ever get to a stage in a painting where there's a lot to do. And when you zoom in, it's like the stress almost increases because there's like, the more you zoom in, the more you can do and the longer it's gonna take. Um, but when I see these Zooming. characters, yeah. And when I see these characters, it's like, it seems so accessible when I zoom out and when I keep it at this range and when I paint the same thing, it's just big brush strokes. And I, it's fun when you can do a whole character in like one or two sittings, which mm -hmm. isn't isn't always the case for me. Sometimes it takes a bit longer, but it keeps it fresh. And I might just be pushing back against the opposite because I spent like months on this one dragon painting. Um, and it, it was kind of like almost a joke on my stream at a point because I'd just been working on it for months and it was on <laughs> and off. So it wasn't like every day. Uh -huh. um, sometimes I, I took a month off at one point. I took some weeks off, but like people would be like, oh, I was here a few months ago. And uh, you were working on this piece, and like I know, <laughs> I know. And I'm back, and I have a new child, and like life has changed, and <laughs> you're still painting the dragon. <laughs> I've aged 15 years, Sam. Yeah, <laughs> I have a family now. Oh, I love it. How did? So I, yeah. How did that end? How was the dragon? I mean, I finished it. It was a commission, so I couldn't abandon it. But gotcha. it yeah. was something that I took on without having done a lot of that stuff before like i do a ton of characters i know the process i'm pretty confident with that but big kind of scale illustrations with multiple characters and like a dynamic camera angle and that kind of stuff i just haven't done a lot um but it was a client i had already worked for and i had done characters for them and they won this big illustration and it sounded super cool so i was like yeah of course um but i just underestimated you know like how long it would take how much time i would have um how easy or difficult it would be for me. Uh, but I ended up finishing it. It was just something where I had to have the mental fortitude just to be like, it's done when it's done. Like it <laughs> yeah. is what it is. And Let I'm not go. I'm not gonna Yeah, I'm not gonna make any more promises to chat. It's just like, sorry guys, thanks for being patient, but I'm still working on it. It's probably gonna be a while. 
No, I think that that's a really good thing. I mean, as a, a watcher of streams, I love seeing everybody's process through any project where it's like, oh, this is a fun one just for me. This is one for a client. This is one for a commission. Any of that stuff, it does change how you think about it as an artist. And to see people's way through that is fascinating. Yeah. So, uh, especially coming back to a piece time and time again, I think that takes incredible fortitude and <laughs> uh, something that like keeps you excited about it, you know, as much as you can be, uh, which is really valuable as an artist to like learn how to do that for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I'm. it certainly tested like my patience. So I, I don't mean that in like, it's really testing my patience, but like I had to find things about it to get excited about. And I had to find like, okay, I can focus on this one part of it and really get into that. Um, so I certainly, you know, showed myself that I can spend that long on something, but I think all these characters I've been doing lately are kind of a, a pushback against that, where it's like, I want to just do quick stuff, not worry about if it's good or not, you know, just have fun with it. Um, just go through the whole process. I, I think that really helps where you're not just focus, focused on rendering and texture anymore. You're focused on the gesture, the costume design, the color, the lighting. And you do that all in such a compressed period of time where I feel like you learn more lessons in that short period of time than you would have like 12 hours of rendering scales or something like that. Um, so I think going through that entire process in kind of a, a way that's quick for you, you know, it doesn't need to be an hour. If you're new to painting, maybe it would take you six hours to do the same thing, but like okay. in a way that's kind of casual and fun. I agree. Uh, by the way, we have about an hour left of our stream today, but we're going to be back tomorrow. Very excited to do uh, part two as well. And uh, by the way, Stony also says, it's always neat to hear the thought processes of artists I'm watching. Since I didn't take art classes, it helps me see the reasoning behind the drawings. Love that. Yeah, it's great. It's always interesting to see other people's workflow because a lot of times there's something people will do and I'll see it on Instagram or live streaming or anything like that where I'm like, oh, I haven't really approached it that way, but I, I see what they're doing and I see the, see the purpose behind it. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'll try it out and sometimes Sometimes in the past, that's changed my workflow a bit. For sure. Uh, also, Cody, thank you for posting uh, Sam's dragon in the chat. Also, your Instagram <laughs> and Twitter. But this is not just a dragon. This is a full party attacking the dragon. It's, my goodness. It's, yeah, it was quite the adventure. It's beautiful, Sam. Oh, oh my thank gosh. You. <laughs> I'll certainly do more illustrations in the future. Um, I think I learned a lot from that one. You know, there's certainly things I would change, but... It was, a, it was a good learning experience for sure. That's one of those, like, uh, I, I love revisiting old paintings or ideas where it's like, oh, yeah, I had something here that I liked. So you mm -hmm. basically just come back to it with all your new artist knowledge, you know, your muscles that you've built up when you come in there and uh, do something new with it, which sometimes can be incredibly rewarding. <laughs> like, okay, I finally saw it through to its, like, actual end. Yeah. I mean, it definitely felt good to finally finish. For sure. But it's funny because I'm sure if I did something like that now, it would be, it would probably go a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Second time is always better. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just found like quicker ways of working and trying to establish things more, uh, more confidently and um, more simplified. There's just a, there would probably be a lot less exploration in the beginning, which I think that took quite a bit of time on. I think it paid off. The whole composition is incredibly intricate, but works so well because you did that. Yeah, and that's that's the big thing with like illustration versus character design. It's like, well, what is the difference between that besides there being a lot of them? But in this one, I don't have to think nearly as much about composition. There's not like how many different shapes are reading among each other in the scene. How are you arranging them? It's just one standing next to the other. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's some shape interaction going on in there for sure but i think composition was the big thing where i was like how do i plan out a composition ahead of time and i feel like i'm a lot more comfortable with that now after that process for sure but composition's a lot of fun you know i definitely want to do more illustrations but i'm having a lot of uh fun just kind of doing random characters and doing like a sketch a day or at least that's what mm -hmm. it's been more or less lately so i'm, I'm really enjoying that time but 
I, I love those big epic illustrations, so I'm sure I'll come back to that. For sure, yeah. Sometimes having multiple, like, oh, I'm doing this and this at the same time, where it's like full illustration and a character design uh, or character illustration, I'd say, yeah, much more, where it's like you you fully paint them. <laughs> it's yeah. like concept art. Uh, then having both of them going concurrently can be a really nice breath of fresh air whenever you jump back to the other one, where it's like, oh, yeah, this, oh, yeah, this. Yeah, for sure. And it's fun to mix it up. There's always like a hundred things I want to work on. Absolutely. Sometimes to to a detriment where I'm like, uh, I, I want to do this this week, but the next week I want to do something else, but I've already started this other thing. <laughs> and you can't switch. The chat will go crazy if you do. They won't allow it. <laughs> uh, by the way, if you want to catch Sam's uh, streams, he streams. Do you have a specific schedule that you stick to? I typically stream Monday through Friday, um, 12 o'clock to two o'clock, give or take. But um, on Behance, I stream Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay, excellent. Uh, and if you want to catch them on Behance, then you can uh, just follow, follow that little Sam Peterson button and you will be notified every single time he goes live. Whoop, whoop. Whoop. Yeah. So what are we up to now in the sketch? I think I have like more or less the idea for the costume. I have like these big shapes as messy as they are. Um, I don't typically go super clean with my line work. So I'll have to have to decide like how much do I want to go into this, but mm -hmm. we're, we're ending at in an hour uh, or a little less. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably going to throw in some colors and see if we can do the lighting situation before the end of the stream. And then for Ooh. next stream, Maybe I'll like touch up the the line work for that a little bit and come back and we can kind of delve into the painting. So I would really like to get into the colors and lighting today. Fantastic. Thank you, Cody, for posting Sam's Behance in the chat. Also follow Cody. Cody's amazing and uh, does tons of artwork here as well. Yeah, Cody's stuff is great, especially um, you don't all follow her on Instagram. It's definitely worth checking out. Follow. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Mm -hmm. Thing I have to the first time. Have, yeah, I have to be careful zooming in. <laughs> Dangerous territory. Okay, but, we'll keep a very close eye on you. Make sure you don't go crazy. <laughs> Sam, think about what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. Let's not let's not get out of control. <laughs> I think I'm gonna give him like a I don't know some kind of interesting expression. That's something. I've been trying to think of just like how to make my characters, these quick little characters, you know, there's no illustration, there's no real story. How do you make them engaging and interesting in an obvious way is, you know, facial expression, something that's not just like my classic. <laughs> line, 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 line. <laughs> Serious guy. Oh, you know? yeah. I like his face shape a lot though. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> the serious this guy. guy where he's just all like kind of ooh. <laughs> Mr. Blockhead. Yes. <laughs> so what kind of expression would our ranger have? I'm kind of thinking that he's he's doing the you know that whole hand over the eyes thing. Um I'll actually probably I don't know. I don't know how much I'm gonna draw his hand out in detail, but I might have to get like a, a reference for that. Maybe that's what I'll do in between oh, now I can and the next reference. stream. Hello, hello. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Just hold that <laughs> pose for another 15 minutes. Sounds good. I'm um, here. <laughs> I mean, that's that's one thing I do with reference actually a lot is mm. just take pictures of hands. Like if for I'm sure. going to reference anything for the character, a lot of times it's the hands because that can be that can be tricky. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that using uh, I mean, yourself or finding pictures of the right angle or whatever is invaluable. <laughs> like You have mm -hmm. to find that reference it's too complex yeah and it's just it's one of those things that i prioritize i guess because face obviously is the thing i'm most concerned about the focal point um but i think secondary to that would be the hands because there's just so much like you can get a lot of gesture in hand drawing a lot of personality mm -hmm. in it and uh i remember hearing a lot too a long time ago that if someone has weaknesses in their drawing you're usually going to be able to tell in the face and hands so I oh. think there's a part of me that's like, I can't let them see my weakness. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> I love that. That's so goofy. Cause then I think, uh, I always feel like when I get to feet, I'm like, oh no, oh no, hide them. 
<laughs> just put a bush it. there. Yeah, exactly. There's foliage. It's shrubbery or something. That's why we don't do like minimalist sci-fi stuff, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's like clean everything. No, 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 no. I can show you guys my little foot drawing <laughs> uh, shorthand if you want to see it. <gasps> yes, any shorthands are welcome. All sure. right, foot drawing tutorial from Sam Peterson Art. I'm watching. So for feet, I do um, I do wedges, right? So if you can draw like a Cuban space or something like that, you know, just kind Solid of a brick, brick shape. Yeah. yeah. The building right. block of the foot. Well, essentially, you just uh, you know you carve it down into a wedge. So mm -hmm. I'll do like these little wedge shapes. It's like a doorstop. Yeah, basically. You know, that's, that's how I'll plant feet, just to make sure they're in perspective. So when I do feet like this, you'll see these, um, basically if I'm drawing the foot that's sticking out this way, that mm -hmm. kind of wedge, the, uh, I put down the heel first, mm -hmm. and then I usually just do this like little wiggle shape <laughs> so it's like you know the, the toes that little um, bend in the foot mm -hmm. but in my head i'm basically drawing you know that wedge nice um, yeah so it's not really that different than this yeah i'm just i'm drawing that wedge with a curved toe and a little wiggle shape so you can almost think of it like as a circle here and a circle here um connected like that whoa it's like you're so, drawing the shoe print that's okay. Yeah, because the toes kind of go like that and the heels back here. Um, it's straight towards the outside more, but the inside kind of has that curve. Yeah, the arch. So that's what the, the footprint looks like. And then you put a wedge on top of that. And Give it a, a wedgie. Foot. Yeah. And there's that little corner where that heel's planted that's kind of good to keep in mind. So this is how I draw feet, um, but it's based off the wedge shape. So you'll see, you know, in my drawings, I'll do this a lot but it's that's that's the process that i'm thinking of there nice yeah you've just gotten really quick at it because you've done it a million times yeah and it's like doing shorthand for a nose or uh in the ear you kind of get that little like shape that you're used to drawing mm -hmm. cody says that's why it's also great to have a mirror at your desk too for facial expressions do you ever do that <laughs> i have this uh little like you know those dome rounded security mirrors you see in like parking lots and stuff? Yeah. I have like a miniature version of that um, <laughs> that my friend got me as a joke a long time ago because actually in this in this room too, but at our old apartment, I would have my back to the door and I'm always like, people are always gonna try to sneak up on me. And you know, I'm a very important <laughs> character in the world of politics. So I have Obviously. lots of enemies and I have to know who's sneaking up on me. Um, so he got me this little security mirror that I attached to my desk, but I use it sometimes for, for reference. Yeah. That's awesome. Is it always like fish eyed out where you're like, woo? <laughs> it's, it's a bit fish eyed, but like little quick things. I might look at it. Um, but honestly, I, I would say what I'd use more than that is I just have OBS open since I'm a streamer, I have a webcam, mm -hmm. I'll have OBS open and I'll take a video if I need to do movements or I'll just screen cap it if I can just hold something like this. So we um, could have video evidence of you doing the reference. <laughs> I want to see that is, posted. <laughs> well, I just can't let you guys get a hold of my hard drive because there's probably a lot of it. Just yes. <laughs> have you ever seen those things where people, it's like a little prank or something where you tell them you're taking a photo into pose, but then they take a video. So it's just yes. people going like. That's what Anthony does every single time he's taking a photo, quote unquote. Yeah. It's horrible. It's, that's kind of how I look. <laughs> You're like, hmm. and all those references all right i'll put the feet on a new layer that i titled feats of course keep, keep defeated this you've defeated the layer Oof. <laughs> puns all day yeah that's right i like your reaction Ooh. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the hybrid sound between delighted and that hurt a little bit yeah <laughs> Good, it's what puns always do to me, I think. It's like I love them, but then it's a little Ow. bit of, <laughs> I felt it. Oh, as long as there's a reaction, that's all I'm going for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and everybody remember to drink water, by the way. Oh, man. The advice yeah, of hydrate. the week for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm really legitimately trying to like drink a lot more water just because it's something that's so easy for me to forget about Absolutely, when I'm working. Yeah. 
and then you feel it later or at least i do a lot of artists hyper focus <laughs> you're just yeah. like i have to get this done then i can finally go to the bathroom it's like no think no of your time body. for hydration all right sam drink i mean come on all right i'll no join everyone. Like yeah i hope Blue. everyone in the chat is doing it too i got my whole water bottle that i haven't drank from at all exactly everybody drink save what was it cody yeah psa flip sip save boom <laughs> flip, sip, cody's save. got it down get that as a tattoo <laughs> i mean cody should have it as a tattoo at this point it, it'll be one that you can guarantee no one else has so if you're really trying to get True. a unique one that the tattoo artist has never seen that's the goal right yeah it's complete want... uniqueness <laughs> i must be one of a kind <laughs> get it like in really dramatic um like old style gothic font too so it looks really Ooh, really yeah. serious thou shalt flip sip and save henceforth forevermore the probably Ooh. most popular quote by gandalf i think <laughs> you shall flip sip save i'm into it <laughs> uh is this like a little capelet across the top yeah yeah i think it's part of his cape that's hanging here nice I um, like it. Then pants. Probably should give him some pants. I'm doing very like loose. <laughs> very loose uh, lines down here around the legs. We can always mm -hmm. come back to it later. And you've been, uh, well, it was a while back, but I remember catching a stream where you were doing studies of folds for fabric. So yeah, figuring out sure. what you want mo most out of fabric and clothing. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think fabric is still one of my weak points. You know, when I, when I think in terms of like, what should I be practicing or what could I still be improving in terms of like, what's the priority? Um, I think fabric is still still one that can be tricky. Mm -hmm, for sure, forever tricky. Yeah, and I'm just, I probably just draw like armor all the time. So throughout <laughs> the years, I always tend towards armor, but not as much cloth. And I don't think that's the case lately, but I think historically i just haven't had as much practice because i'm always like armored guy yeah yeah and you studied armor um yeah i've done quite a bit of like armor studies and i'm pretty comfortable painting metal for the most part but i guess you never really finish studying that stuff well yeah there's always more you can do but having some semblance of like study on it i feel like gives so much more of a what would you call it like a uh, stable foundation for your mm -hmm. your characters and your costuming in general like you can tell when somebody's studied and when somebody's just like oh i've pulled it from my head and never looked at an armor thing in my life <laughs> yeah and that's the thing like people want to draw from their imagination i think that's a great goal and everything but you have to keep in mind if you ever notice any gaps in your understanding you're doing yourself a disservice by not going and finding that information to fill in those gaps so if you're just like I'm really struggling with this cape, but I want to, I don't want to use reference. So it's like, well, you've just deprived yourself of a learning opportunity. So I think you need those times where you do look up things, you study things directly, you're making a point to do that. And then later you can use that visual library that you built up through studies to be able to have a little bit more flexibility when you're just coming up with it off the cuff. For sure. When you say depriving yourself of learning opportunity, I just heard a million artists being like, okay, dad. <laughs> <laughs> Son, you're doing yourself a disservice. <laughs> Do I'm your not studies. mad, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like... and Cody, you link to your clothing study. Thank you. Cody. Oh, cool. Yeah, I did, um, I did some of those sometime back, I think on stream. Mm -hmm. I just hadn't posted them for a long time, so I kind of finished them up, but I definitely want to do more. Mm-hmm. Good practice. I think They're one beautiful. thing is I almost get like bored of doing straight studies sometimes because I'm like, I want to do a cool character. But one good exercise is to take a reference that like, okay, this would be great for studying clothing, but how can I take this and like make it into a character? So mm -hmm. maybe you're using some of the same folds, some of the same layering of that cloth from the reference, but you can still like have fun and be creative with it uh, while, you know, doing a study. Definitely. Yeah. It, it all goes hand in hand and you got to kind of listen to your brain and what it wants to do. Yeah. Cause studying doesn't have to be like copying a photo. It depends what level you're at. I actually really should flip. Oh man, this is all right. <gasps> PSA so everyone flip earlier. <laughs> what do you see immediately? 
Um, he's like slanted and I want to rotate him. Let, let me, let's try this. I'm gonna duplicate my pose layer. I want to back it up so I still have it. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'll just rotate these together. Let's try that first and foremost. And then like, I want to warp his body a bit, like his shoulders. What have I done? His, his shoulders like oddly positioned somehow. Maybe I'll just warp him all together. So I'm just going to try this. We'll see how it goes. But this whole costume layer, um, I have warp hotkeyed. And I'm just going to mm, nice. move it down a little bit. Warp hotkeyed. So you warp a lot? I do. Bit of a warper. You're in the warp zone. Taking off at warp speed. I can't stop. I'm sorry. All of the above. <laughs> you guys are just like too good at puns. I'm, I'm just bad at them, I think. <laughs> no, I think you're the audience. <laughs> you just have to react. <laughs> uh, Wade says, yes, that's what I've been doing. It's kind of a hybrid study. So like using it in a creative way, but like mm -hmm. also studying. Yeah, and you can do the same thing with like lighting, for example. If you're if you're trying to do a study where you just look at the colors and the lighting in a certain, you know, lighting setup, you don't have to draw like the same person's face, you know? If it's like a young man or something, you could do like an old lady or an old man or like a you know, some fantasy elf or something. Mm -hmm. And you can just use that information from the lighting. And uh as long as the head's like in the same general shapes, you know, you could even turn it another direction that would be more of a challenge because now you have to know what planes would the light hit in that scenario mm -hmm. so you can kind of take it at different levels of difficulty depending on how much you want to change it depending on what you're trying to study and test yourself on for sure elbow oh is it an armor coming off yeah yeah nice. i'm thinking like trying to think like okay if i'm doing this my my upper arm is going forward and then this part of my arm is coming back in space mm -hmm. um so i'm trying to indicate that right here like where is his hand going think volumetrically always, yeah and i i think it's good to do like form lines like that for um, sure kind of inform yourself inform yourself see you're doing it you're doing it peter <laughs> unintentionally uh. <laughs> maybe i'm just such a natural i don't even notice yeah that's right you got it <laughs> Ooh, i like the lengthening of his uh, brow horns horn brows yeah horn brows i think that's a good one we had a tangent before which kind of looks weird so i just made him a little bit longer nice i have a fear of tangents i think yeah and if uh, somebody doesn't know do you can you define a tangent yeah, so a tangent is usually where two lines meet up exactly. So if we have like a horn here and then his hand is like behind it, um, it's weird. And, and there's two like many points that meet up. So it confuses depth. The mm. whole reason tangents are typically bad is because they take an opportunity to, to show depth and overlapping shapes and they have things meet up in a way that's visually confusing for what's in front of the other thing. So if you can take one shape like that, and pass another through it and that way there's more um, information on what's going on so it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing typically um, I think our eyes just don't always like tangents too much but it also gives more information depth dynamicism all that stuff mm -hmm. I like that it's an opportunity to show depth and so it's kind of like the uh the thing you were saying before it's like a learning opportunity now it's an opportunity to show depth so <laughs> No tangents and do your Everything. studies. <laughs> Everything's an opportunity. <laughs> well, that's part of the thing with um, composition, actually. When I was doing my compositions for that dragon illustration, one of the lessons I learned was I, I like to I like to block out shapes when I'm doing compositions. So it's like, okay, the dragon's here. And um, maybe I wouldn't do it completely dark since he's further back, but maybe the dragon's here. And there's a character standing in front of him here. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some, uh, maybe his tail's going like that. Maybe there's a character in the background, you know, back here. And there's all these things where you can kind of layer it. But what I realized was a lot of compositions I like looking at 
reference and looking at artists who I think are amazing composers. Like Wayne Reynolds was one artist I was looking at. He's great with shapes and his illustrations for Pathfinder, uh, which is kind of like D&D. &D. Um, mm -hmm. He has a lot of great overlapping shapes and a lot of like big, medium, small reads where you have a primary read, you have a secondary read, a tertiary and so on. But I realized on some of my first compositions and even on that illustration, I could have done better with it is I did this more. I had like one shape and maybe I had a variety of shapes and size, but they were more like decals, you know, where mm. perhaps there was an open plane of grass, but then everything I placed on that was placed separately when it's a lot more effective if you have, you know, these kind of layering of shapes and um, it makes up like an interesting arrangement. For sure. So that was a big lesson I actually learned. And that that's very related to tangents, I think, because I just, I missed out on an opportunity to show depth and like, you know, interesting ways things lined up. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that with us. I think that's a really great tip. Uh, by the way, Fairy has a question. Uh, do you have any tips on painting highlights and shadow? Do I ever? Um, <laughs> man, I could legitimately talk all day about both of those things. So highlights for me. Whew, getting... Well, we could also tomorrow we're going to be doing a lot of talk yeah, about maybe, lighting and stuff. So. Maybe that would maybe that would be a good one for tomorrow. But um, if you show up tomorrow, Fairy, ask me again. But I'll try to answer it briefly here. When I'm lighting a character, uh, and I guess we'll actually be doing this pretty soon. I try to imagine the entire character as one object or a sphere. So we're all familiar, or at least if you've practiced painting a bit with the old sphere lighting exercise, where you, you know, the highlight where the light's hitting and then it kind of gradually fades off into shadow and there's reflected light in moments. I find that people, a lot of times when they're painting, will approach every major shape as that sphere. So for example, the head is a sphere. So they do like a highlight on the top, shadow on the bottom. Um, the hand is a sphere, the bicep is a sphere. Mm -hmm. Every object will have a highlight and every object will have a um, shadow. And it, a lot of times people go way too shiny. Not all material is shiny. Um, mm -hmm. Even human skin all, isn't always shiny depending on the circumstances. So what I try to do is imagine the whole character's silhouette as, um, as a single sphere rather than every other object. So I try to get like an overall lighting scheme down where... I basically light it like a statue hmm, where mm -hmm. the whole thing is kind of one object rather than having highlights like on the bicep and the pec and the belt buckle. And so if you're doing highlights down here, um, you're not going to have them as bright as mm -hmm. the highlights up here. So maybe their head is like the brightest point. It's really getting that highlight. But if you have a highlight on a belt buckle or something down here, the highlight mm -hmm. might be a much darker value like this. Now, relatively speaking, or relative to the values it's on top of or around, this is a highlight. But when mm -hmm. we're talking about value, it's a shadow in terms of like the part that's really brightly lit. Mm -hmm. So I guess relative value is kind of my key there. Try not to, whenever you're making a highlight, don't feel like you need to go white. Feel yeah. like you just need to go brighter than the area it's on top of. So this could be a highlight down here or like a change in value. It doesn't need to be super bright. So I guess that's Absolutely. a short way of putting it, but yeah, it's certainly a topic I can go pretty in depth on, but maybe we'll talk about that more tomorrow. Yeah. You said it was like relative value is the kind of idea there. Yeah, yeah. Trying to think of the whole character as one big object that you're painting. Um, and really think of the bright values as hitting the top of it, whereas they kind of maybe fade off towards the end a little bit. Mm -hmm. If your lighting's coming from the top. Yeah, because what I notice, um, the most common things I notice that are issues with painting for people who are a little bit newer to it is that they put a highlight on everything. The other is that there's not enough value range. A lot of times they're in this mid-tone range where the highlights aren't that bright and the shadows aren't that dark. but. Mm -hmm. But specifically, it's usually the shadows don't go dark enough. So really try to find your darkest points in your painting where the least light would get to. Use a reference if you need. Um, and uh, try to knock in your darkest darks in there. Darkest darks, okay, yeah. So you get like that balance of like, here's my lightest light, here's my darkest dark, and then everything in between is my playground. 
Yeah, <laughs> and it, it's a little bit easier to lay out for me once I know where my darkest darks are. Mm -hmm. But whenever I do paint overs and I, I can tell someone's a bit newer to painting, um, I notice like, okay, you need to boost up the shadows here, here, and here. It's pretty common. I always need to boost my shadows. Sam, please tell me that every single time I paint. I don't I don't know. Your stuff looks pretty uh pretty spot on to me. It's not get very dark. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If you ever put like a black and white layer over it, it's just huh. like very uh light usually. <laughs> well, the thing is like you can have really successful high key images too. Like oh, for I'll sure. see I'll see some people who and it makes me stop and think. I'll see some people who have a really high key image and it works beautifully. And I'm like, all right, I, I talk so often about contrast. Um, why is this one working so well? And then I'll look and it will have like contrast in just the right key areas. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you imagine a photograph of a model, uh, you probably see this a lot of time in like magazines and stuff, but they'll have this really bright beauty lighting um, and maybe the background's white too. And it's this really high key image but the image looks great and it reads um, just with grayscale. And it's because like, there'll be a lot of contrast around the eyes and the nostrils and like maybe the corners of the mouth. There's these key ambient occlusion areas that really pop it out, even Absolutely. though the rest of it is so high key. Ambient occlusion, you're bringing out the $5 words. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever had a stream where I didn't say the word ambient occlusion. <laughs> you have maybe to. I should, maybe I should try. We're talking about shadows. Oh yeah, here's the no zoom challenge. Here's the no ambient occlusion challenge. Yeah. Uh, my little catchphrases. I could have like a little um, pull string doll made of me with all my most popular bingo phrases. Bingo card. We're going to have a bingo when we watch your streams. <laughs> nice. Sam bingo. <laughs> Uh, by the way, when we were talking about tangents, Wade says, I've been watching your tangents, Sam. <laughs> Always uh -oh. watching. And Cody says, I can't stand tangents. I'm hyper aware of them in my artwork because they bother me so much. Lol. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not the only one. But... Oh, yeah. Far from. I, I do remember hearing before someone saying, like, you don't need to be so stressed out about tangents because there's like a million details that could potentially cause tangents, but it's like those big ones. When you're doing the big silhouette of this character, um, like that horn in the arm is part of the silhouette. It's a pretty dominant shape. I would yeah. not want that to tangent, but like if the belt buckle down here is tangenting with like a fold of cloth, you know, there's, those are smaller interior shapes that I'm not too stressed about that don't, don't really have a huge visual impact um, on this piece, so. Yeah, especially at this point. If it's a tangent that pops out to you and bothers you, yeah, that's where I'll get them. Go get them. Uh, by the way, we have about 24, 23 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, math. I was going to say 25 and it was going to be all clean and then time passed and it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what we'll try to do in the remaining time is right now, I'm, if anyone's wondering, I'm selecting everything with the lasso tool. Mm -hmm. because I am doing a mask. Um, I used to fill it in with a brush, but I really like some of the interesting silhouette changes the lasso tool can get. There's like a lot of little oh, yeah. sharp changes and interesting uh, shapes I get with it. For so sure. I've, been using, I've been using the lasso tool as of late. Um, and then I'm gonna fill this in and this is gonna be our mask and we're gonna be using clipping masks for this character. We may mm. have to come back to the robot next time, Let's see. So I'll make a new layer, call it mask. Rusty. Oh yeah, rusty. <laughs> we should put that as like a decal on the side. That could be fun. It's all coming together. I love it. No, we need a name for our ranger character, obviously. Oh. Yeah, Something I wasn't even thinking tiefling. about that. <laughs> Something what? Something the tiefling. But I mean, oh, if they've yeah. been out in the wild, maybe their name isn't also uh, very important or anything. Like Rusty obviously has to be called. So it's like, hey, Rusty over here. But Rusty isn't necessarily saying the ranger's name back. Like, hey, Steve. So <laughs> Steve the tiefling. <laughs> Strikes fear into the heart of everyone who comes across him. <laughs> is, that, is that Steve? Run! I love so it. this is... I think that's about it. Um, that is a I, strong silhouette, sir. I like yeah, it. I've noticed, I feel like we could have a bit more interest on this right side. It looks a little dull to me. And this isn't something I always do, but I feel like we could maybe erase part of this cape and give so this- uh, The under things come out? 
Yeah, break up that straight line a little bit. Just a little bit more interest. That is a great tip for silhouettes. You're looking for balance mostly. Like an interesting shape. Yeah, exactly. And it's a really, I mean, it's a really important part of character design, I think. Like the big shapes you're using are, are really going to determine the look of that character. And then their silhouette is a huge part of that. For so sure. I think we got a cool silhouette going on this one side. Well, now on the right side, but now kind of want to do something like this. So if the cape is blowing to the left, you know, that might just look a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And usually I can identify this in the drawing, but um, I think this one, it got past me a little bit. So now I'm like, hmm. Maybe mix you're it up. talking and drawing on live streaming like how could you not have the perfect <laughs> plan how did i not sketch? foresee this oh, come on you're losing it sam <laughs> also capes are just a huge opportunity <laughs> just like references and uh ta tangents an opportunity for depth but uh capes are such a great opportunity for the composition of like just a single character yeah Definitely. I also love how his silhouette makes him feel like he's bottom heavy with that cape, but then when you see the sketch, you see like his body shape and it's almost like you get two silhouettes for the price of one. I oh like yeah. <laughs> yeah, and maybe uh, see that come to life a little bit more in the next stage. So I think that silhouette's not too bad. Um, we'll, yeah, I guess we'll get into color now and then we'll see if we can do some lighting. By the way, Steve Festus in the chat says, I'm not that scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's Steve. It's ah! Steve the horrible. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess we'll do color. And then if there's time, um, I'll show you the sort of lighting thing really quickly. But let's, let's get in here, throw some color down. Well, tomorrow we're going to come back and give the lighting all the love, all the the next stages of painting and everything we're going to be doing tomorrow. So definitely come back and visit us at uh, 9 30 uh, PM AM AM Pacific. <laughs> Same time as today, just tomorrow. We look forward to having you. Can I throw out another little PSA for this stream? Please. Yes. Always. I, I just saved my file for the first time. So may Sit, maybe flip, save, maybe remember to hit control less more than I just did. Wow, Sam's yeah. living on the edge. I was just gonna say, I'm a wild man. You, know, you never know what I'm gonna do. Dangerous. If your habits are like that, I would highly recommend implementing auto saves, <laughs> just so you never have tragedy strike quite as hard. Yeah, for sure. So what I like to do at this point, sometimes I even turn off the lines, um, is I like Ooh. to treat it like, like I'm finding a color palette in a very free and sketchy way. So I'm thinking ranger, greens, browns, uh, yellows maybe. Ooh. Maybe there's like some tans, like maybe his pants are kind of a tan color. He's got his but, khakis out in the wild. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's fun just to be kind of free with the color palette. I really like this. Yeah, so far just like throwing colors around in a kind of abstract way within the silhouette makes it feel like you're bringing an organic quality to it, which is really fun to see. Yeah, and at, at a certain point, I may not even think like, well, what am I painting? Like what part? Um, but if you can just find a color palette, I've seen traditional painters do this before with their illustrations where it's very abstract, but they're trying to get like a mood and a, a feel to it. And um, I think, you know, you can kind of get that in a in a character too, a little bit. Mm -hmm, for sure. Plus it's just fun. <laughs> no rules for a little bit. Wait, what? We're having fun? That's not part of art? What? I know, right? Cross the line wrong. this time, I'm sorry. <laughs> too far, Sam. I'm thinking like a little blue to offset all the warmer earth tones. I guess the, the green is not super warm, but I think I just like fitting blues a lot. Maybe something kind of neutral though. I don't want it to be too saturated or mm -hmm. something like that. Nice. But then we also have to figure out what color is his skin gonna be? Cause we were doing a tiefling. Mm 
Mm -hmm. But like the, the other day I did an elf with blue skin and white hair, and I don't think that's typically something you see. So we can kind of go crazy, but. Oh, do what you want, Sam. Paranormal. Tieflings. Well, I think tieflings are typically like reddish, right? Or purplish. So do we want something really warm or something really cool, I guess is what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Oh, the options. And then um, occasionally I'll turn back on my lines. I actually need to be a little bit more precise about what areas I'm choosing. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then his his weapon. Ooh. That's a that's definitely one we need to think about. Opportunity for color. I think so. I think I want to do like the magic glowing. It's got to be like oh, gotta. I don't know. I always go to this kind of bluish, you know, this crazy turquoise blues. Mm -hmm. Um, but it could also be like, I imagine some sort of arcane magic being like purple. Ooh. Or we could do like a mix of them. Ooh. We're going to be doing something tomorrow that I've been having so much fun with. If anyone did the daily creative challenges with me, you'll know what I'm talking about, but it's a magical effect. Super easy to do and set up. Really fun to play with. Um, we'll play with that tomorrow. Just remind me, we'll do a radiant map effect for, for magic spells and it's been my favorite way to do magic spells lately. I can't wait. By the way, yeah, if you didn't uh, catch Sam's uh, Photoshop daily creative challenges, there are replays of them and uh, basically learn everything about Photoshop through Sam. Uh, and also tomorrow we are going to be back at 9.30 a.m. Pacific to work on this uh, tiefling plus rusty. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to be uh, focusing on lighting and also talking about apparently magical effects, which I am just mm -hmm. all here for. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. You can just kind of go nuts and play with it. So we'll definitely be uh, going into that. Cody says, got to add sparkles for magic. Yeah. Mercurial says, uh, magical gradients. Ooh. That's the one. Mercurial <laughs> knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Cody says, again, sip, flip, save, but especially in the heat waves, sip, 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 flip, save. <laughs> and Norsh is adding stretch. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is uh, very important. Everybody take care of yourselves. Oh, yeah. Stretching them. I, I got it down pretty good for, for the wrists, but I'm trying to actually stretch more in general. Just yeah. Like, I don't know. I've been, I've been on a pretty good workout routine lately, but I'm like, I really need a take time to actually stretch more. Oh, it's a it's big difference. Integral to working out for sure. Got to do that. But uh, have you gotten into the habit of like after you wake up and before you go to bed? Because I find that that's a really good time to stretch. I think so too. I haven't, but I need to try to fit it in. Like, because I think all you really need is like you know, five minutes or something before you go to bed and waking up and it's really not that hard to fit in. So yeah, anything's better than nothing. Yeah. So By I'm the kind way, of playing. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm kind of playing around <laughs> with some of the colors I chose. You can see. Excellent. Um, well, we're starting to get a color palette. Definitely. It's coming together very quickly, and I love it so far. But you know, that one color, it could throw it all off. No, I'm joking. <laughs> it could ruin everything we've worked for. Ugh. Sketch everything. Rusty falls apart. The world implodes. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say we have about 12 minutes left in today's stream, but again, we will be back tomorrow with Sam. So uh, tune back in. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll definitely have to get into the bulk of the lighting tomorrow. So something I wanted to talk about with this stream a lot is how easily and quickly you can change lighting in characters in Photoshop, just because we have all these adjustment layers you can use. And um, actually, I, I think I have the one up. But it's really easy to change characters after the fact. So for this armor guy, I don't think I actually popped him up. But this was a character I did, and it was just kind of a, you know, standard daylight lighting. Um, but then I changed it in like five minutes to this at the end, just to do an alternate version. So cool. Um, but like I was saying too with him, it was these kind of oh. things where we set up our lighting in different ways, where you can get this like nighttime lighting like golden hour sunset lighting. Um, he's in some cathedral, I don't know, and there's a hard top lighting, some sort mm -hmm. of like Diablo style lighting from the top, very dramatic. Um, 
you know, back rim lighting with a little bit of bounced warm glow lighting. So there's so much fun you can have with that stage. And I've really been trying to be more intentional. So what we're doing now is color, right? Like we're choosing our color palette and all the things associated with that. But then there's that whole other decision you make afterwards. Well, like, what do you want the mood to be? What do you want the feeling and atmosphere of this picture to be? So we'll come in right. with that next time. Do you have a, a mood in mind? I kind of want to push that like golden hour um, sunset lighting more. I, I did that a few times, but I really want to push it as much as you saw in that last picture, but right. we'll see. We'll play around and see what looks good. It's absolutely beautiful. I love that you did that so clearly with that one character to show it all the way through is it seriously looks just like we need an art book of Sam Peterson. Like oh, <laughs> it's ready. You. I love I appreciate it. appreciate it. Of course. Also, By the way, she... Oh, sorry. Go, on. Oh, go ahead. Oh, Roseanne just said, Sam got me interested in character rendering in Photoshop. And I love that. Oh, awesome. Glad <laughs> to hear that. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to say, if anyone has any suggestions for the color of the hair, let me know. My brain's going towards white again, but I just did a character like that, but I don't, I don't know. Well, are we going with this uh, background color? No, we are not. Oh. We will be uh, choosing something. I guess we'll have to think about that too, but I can picture this guy being in a forest. So maybe something that feels a bit more like that. Hmm. I was thinking white hair would be awesome, but then on that background, like it doesn't show yeah. as easily. So yeah. Oh, yeah, we'll, so cool. we'll, we'll definitely make adjustments with that. I guess I'll try out some different colors right now and see. If we're feeling yeah, we got time. It's all good. Ten whole minutes. We can do whatever we want. Party, party. So right here, you can see I'm just kind of doing flat colors, and I allow my multiply layers and my color dodge layers that we'll be doing tomorrow um, to do the bulk of the work for that. So I try to keep them pretty flat, but I don't necessarily try to keep them super clean, just roughing in the right shapes. Nice. I'm thinking with Rusty, I'm already imagining him having like a lot of those earth tones too. What if he had like a few um, like sprigs of uh, like foliage on top of him so that he's like blending into the like, oh, hide the little scout bot or whatever. Like he's trying to be low profile. For sure. I, I was kind of picturing him being like some warm tones, like not, you know, the kind of blue cool gunmetal color, but just like maybe almost like slightly rusty looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, hence mm -hmm. his name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I like that, like, I imagine them being in the forest and they're hiding from some people, right? So it's kind of like those military tarps they put on Jeeps and stuff where it's like netting with leaves and stuff in it that you can just put over a tent or a, a vehicle or something. Mm -hmm. I kind of picture him having some sort of netting on top with like a little set of leaves maybe so he can squat down really low, kind of nestle in. Yes. Oh, that'd be so cute. Hide. He comes up and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> can we use that as like an official soundbite for his audio? Yeah. If we ever give him like little, little voice clips, we'll use that one. <laughs> he's mostly beeps when he's communicating, but then when he like does something physical, there's just a little <laughs> like comes out. <laughs> it's funny because I can actually totally picture that. Yes. I think it works perfectly. I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one who thinks of like voices for the characters. Oh, you gotta. Yeah. Little personality quirks I think are a good way to like determine you know who are they I think with D&D &D, it kind of trains you to do that like you want to see why is this character unique from all the others because you know it's a whole world and so you kind of have to figure out what's this character creature's place in it mm -hmm. and the little sound effects are the way to do that <laughs> clearly I mean there's actually some projects I want to do in the future you know, like games or, or different ideas I've had, animations, that kind of thing, where it would actually be like maybe a little bit of voice acting for characters and stuff like that. And I think it's a lot of fun to think about. Absolutely. Oh, voice act everything. Do it. Yeah. Maybe someday. You guys might see that. Who knows? I can't wait. <laughs> By the way, Norse says uh, fiery red for the hair and Sukanya says lilac hair. Oh, we've got some strong opinions coming in. Lilac, lilac. fiery red. Yeah. Interesting. Can I can I admit that I don't know if I know what lilac color is? Ooh. Google lilac uh, flowers. But I'd say it's a, a light purple, uh, more towards the slightly reddish purples, I'm guessing, I think. I mean, that's just me. But it's like very toned down. Oh, okay. What do you call it? Like 
it's it's not like a super saturated color. I think any time someone uses an actual like color term for a color, I'm like, uh, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> Chartreuse? <I> just, <laughs> yeah. Mauve? Like, yeah, none of that. I don't know any of it. I, I just like, it's a, it's a desaturated deep red more towards the orange side. It's like yeah exactly that's how i always think of colors <laughs> basically i think of colors in terms of the sliders in photoshop mm -hmm. it's my entire perception of color that's so funny we should tell the creators of photoshop that just like you are my understanding of color <laughs> i mean that's that's how i learned and yeah i mean if i was from a traditional painting background with acrylics or oils or anything like that i think you always hear those people talk about it in terms of tube colors yeah like, definitely. like it's like it's kind of a cobalt blue and that sort of thing. And I'm yeah. vague, vaguely familiar with some of those. Phthalo um, blue, like what is that? Yeah, like those I understand more <laughs> than like, I don't know, I know burgundy, I know, that's, that's probably it. <laughs> burgundy, nailed it. <laughs> I know about burgundy. Make burgundy, <laughs> you gotta show us now, like do you actually know? <laughs> I know all about colors. Obviously. Uh, also, what was I thinking? Oh, I, I read a book that I want to recommend to you. It's called The Secret Life of Colors and mm. uh, or Secret Lives of Colors, probably. Um, and it's all about the history of a lot of those pigments. So you get a better understanding of what taupe or mauve or <laughs> things you've never heard of are. Uh, carmine red, like what it's made of, where it came from, a lot of history tied to it. It's so cool. Oh, okay like all the like the pigments for the paints and all that pigments for paints but also just like uh, basically this person started a blog where they told stories about different colors so it's not necessarily just tied to paints um hmm. but some of them are so it's like lapis lazuli like that is a very well-known pigment that was one of the most expensive paints when it was being made and so they go through a bit of the history of that. But then there's another color that's like based on this uh, rumor that went around in like the 16th century about a royal and their relationship to this other person and <laughs> just weird stuff where it's like, I've never heard of this color. Tell me a story. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> and they made those blog posts into basically like one to three pages. So it's a very easy read uh, of each color. But I digress. Uh, Rob Zill is in the chat saying lurking. Thanks hey, for what's up, Rob? Rob. <laughs> so this is kind of a quick preview of what we'll do tomorrow, but I'm basically going to darken the character down uh, with a multiply layer. I usually choose like a desaturated purplish blue color that you can see here, something like that. Nice. Um, just something that looks good on all colors, and I usually find that pulls the shadows down, so to speak. And then uh, we'll do a key light with a color dodge layer, but all this stuff we'll get really more in depth with tomorrow. And what I'll probably do is make sure I have my colors a little bit more cleaned up in terms of the flat colors. Mm -hmm. um, if I need to, I'll clean up the lines a little bit, but it's more or less gonna be kind of where we're leaving off now. Whoa, that was a crazy layer. Oh yeah, that was that's what color dodge does if you go too bright, but <laughs> something like that. Very cool. Where you can really like start blocking in. Or very warm. <laughs> well done thank you thank you man you already get the like oh it's the sun is getting low sun's getting real low buddy and we can play with like the way that he's shading his face so mm -hmm. like maybe he's just shading his eyes right there and the light's Ooh. coming through effective but you can get a lot of fun mood uh this way so i enjoy working this way lately for sure it looks really fun. It's one of those things where like watching you paint makes me want to paint. <laughs> yeah, I get that all the time with uh, other people, other people's streams. Absolutely. Yeah, you're just like itching. Like, okay, when do I get to do this? Yeah. Mm, <laughs> it's <me>. not fair. <laughs> Which is the best. I mean, inspiring other artists is like the goal. <laughs> well, I mean, that's kind of a, when people ask, how do you stay motivated, not get artist block and all that? Like a lot of times it is just other artists. I'll see people doing cool stuff and it makes me want to do the same thing. Absolutely. We're getting to the end of the time. Uh, I just want to remember, remember, I want to remind you all <laughs> that we're going to be back and I'm going to talk at you uh, back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Pacific for part two. And we're going to follow along as Sam puts the finishing touches on this illustration uh, and probably paint some rusty, which is very exciting. I am personally excited for that. 
Uh, and also, uh, you can stick around today for the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge with Julia Masalka. Uh, and immediately afterwards, we've got Voodoo Val for a new Adobe Live Game Show. <laughs> So it should exciting. be pretty exciting, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing that one for sure. Absolutely. Well, Val is always just such a gem. I mean, if you are on Behance at all, you know Voodoo Val. And uh, <laughs> Adobe Live Game Show sounds like the best thing I could possibly think of. So let's all watch together. <laughs> yeah. Check it out, everybody. Absolutely. So Sam, we will see you tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much for painting with us. Are there any shout outs you'd like to give of like Instagram, Twitter? all the things yeah um if you guys want to keep up with me instagram is the best place right now of course you can follow me on behance as well um twitter is a good place to get notice when i go live anywhere so instagram twitter behance good places to keep up with me excellent well we will see you tomorrow thank you so much for being here sam <laughs> yeah thank you and thanks for stopping by everybody appreciate it Absolutely. and we'll see you all tomorrow <laughs> bye hey.